Welcome to Get Married. I'm Colin Cowie. Every bride wants to look and feel sexy on her wedding day. Today, we'll tell you how wearing a little less can get a lot more when it comes to the groom's reaction. And I'm Deanna Pappas. We'll show you how a fantastic four star became his bride's real life superhero through the lens of celebrity photographer Robert Evans. Get ready, it's Get Married. I can't say it enough. The most important rule for your wedding is that it reflects you and your personal sense of style. This is just as true for your wedding gown as it is for everything else. You should wear the dress rather than the dress wear you. Now don't let your gown cover up who you are. Let it enhance your natural style and beauty. GetMade.com and I have all the tips and trends you need when it comes to finding the ideal wedding gown. Sexy is something you want your groom to describe you as. But remember, grandparents are still part of the wedding party. So on your wedding day, how do you look sexy and sophisticated at the same time? Top designers at New York Fashion Week showed us exactly how to get that jaw-dropping look. She wants to be able to show off her sensuality with low necklines, with off-the-shoulder detailing, but done in a tasteful way, not to be vulgar. There's one thing about looking sensual and having a sexiness about it, but it's a very fine line. And that fine line can be walked in a short skirt, open back, or layers of sheer fabrics. As you saw, there were see-throughs, but it was never too much. And that's the limit is very, very important to keep. Remember, the right look for you means choosing one that draws attention to your best features and flatters your others. Don't forget to have fun in whatever you choose. To me, brides are enjoying their weddings more now. They're kind of letting themselves go and really kind of using it as a wonderful excuse for a party and sort of celebration of everything it's meant to be. So, you know, I think a lot of the sort of taboos and traditions of bridal wear are kind of breaking down a little bit, which gives us designers much more scope. And that scope, whether it's a plunging neckline, a mini skirt or beaded embroidery that you absolutely love can truly be anything that makes you feel sexy. Finding a gown that you feel confident in is the ultimate symbol of sexiness. To see more gorgeous, sexy looks, head to the gown gallery on getmade.com. I love that moment of surprise at a wedding when a groom sees his bride for the first time in her gown. If she's wearing a sexy dress, I expect his jaw to drop just a little bit more. But for brides who want to take his breath away, try something called boudoir photography. It's not about the dress, but what's beneath it. Picture you at your sexiest, looking amazing in your favorite lingerie, and feeling like a million bucks. You can capture that moment forever in a boudoir photography session. The hot new trend for brides who want to surprise their groom with an unforgettable gift. It's oftentimes given to the groom on the morning of the wedding, the night before when they know they're not going to see each other that night. It's also given the honeymoon night if the bride wants to be there when he opens it. Grooms just love it. I mean, to see your wife to be in that special way and to know that she's doing something for you, something that's private, is just a really neat thing. It was fun to get to watch him look at it because it's not very often that you see somebody that has been in your life for a long period of time get nervous and he was just like excited nervous while he was looking at them. And he just kept saying, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. The session can be as risque as you want. Boudoir photography is just the beauty of your curves and sensuality on film. So it can be as conservative as fully clothed, but 
photographed in a sexy way, or it can be nudity in a pretty way, but nothing too overtly sexual. But the key to amazing boudoir photographs is your comfort level. That means finding the right photographer. It's important to make the client feel comfortable and understand that they're not a model. They don't have this experience, so you need to be able to work with them and show them what looks beautiful and make them feel good about it in an honest way, like really help them to get the best shots they can and shoot them in a really beautiful way. You just have to take a deep breath and trust your photographer. Make sure that you've spoken to your photographer and really conveyed very clearly what it is that you are comfortable showing, what you're not comfortable showing. I think you just have to do it. I think everybody has their issues. Nobody is completely 100% comfortable being either half naked or partially naked or completely naked in front of a camera, unless you're a movie star. But it's not just about finding the right photographer. Make the right choices for your lingerie and undress for success. There's so many things that you have to take under consideration. The person's body shape, skin color, hair color, and you have to incorporate all of that into the lingerie. If you're smaller on the cuffs, then we want to do something lower cut, something plunge that pushes you together, shows a little more cleavage. If you're fully busted, they want to do at least three quarter cup to a fuller cup so that it doesn't seem like you're falling out of it. So we can create tasteful and classic looks. You have to feel luxurious in it. And to me, luxury is really not luxury if you're not comfortable in it. Letting your inner vixen show means more than slipping into sexy lingerie. Know your guy. I've had clients come in with boas and hats. I think it's fun to bring in something of the grooms. I always ask to bring in something from his hobby. So they'll bring in baseball bats just for like a comic appeal. One important thing to remember, the boudoir photo shoot isn't just for him. It can enhance your whole bridal experience. It wasn't just one day, it wasn't just a blink. I went out of the ordinary, I stepped out of the box, I stepped out of my comfort zone a little bit, and now that my wedding's over, I feel happy about it. I look back at it and it feels very complete. To find photographers and other fantastic wedding professionals in your area, check out the local resources pages of GetMarried.com. Coming up on Get Married, roses, orchids, so many floral choices. We'll help you weed through the options to find the perfect petals for your big day. And you'll see how this Hollywood hero's Mexican wedding was truly fantastic. Plus, Colin's got a truly chic wedding tip you won't want to miss. It's all ahead on Get Married. Flowers play an important role in every wedding. A great way to make your wedding unique is to add a favorite flower that has sentimental meaning for you. But personalizing your flowers isn't the only thing you need to consider when selecting your florals. Creating elegant wedding decor that is beautiful and personal starts with identifying a flower and a color. Flowers are important to a wedding because it has color, it has romance, um, it brings it up to a level of sophistication. They're just important because they really add to the look of the day. And to make sure you get the look you've always dreamed of, consider the location and the season of your wedding. They should go in to see what is in season and use the seasonal flowers. There is some flowers you should avoid using for the bouquets because they don't last, they don't take heat or they love cold but not freezing cold. If you're getting married in Mexico or someplace really hot, you're probably not going to want tulips or lily of the valley and things like that. A lot of brides love peonies but sometimes there's a really short window in May when they're available. Other than that, they can be very, very costly. Tropical flowers flowers, orchids, cymbidiums, dendrobiums are user-friendly throughout the year. If you're in search of a less expensive yet romantic floral selection for your wedding, there's a flower you can always count on. Roses are a staple. You should also be aware of how many stems you get for what you're spending. If you're comparing different vendors, a lot of people I think quote and they say a vase full of white orchids and tulips. I think it's important to say how many white tulips and orchids are actually in that bouquet because one vendor may be you know, quoting on twice as many flowers as the other. And if you're a bride on a limited budget, your flowers can still set the tone. 
If you use a lot of one flower in a room, it can be a real high impact. You know, you can do all roses across the room and that could, make, that could create a lot of show across the room. Using the flowers of the season will always save you money. Choose things that are in abundance in that area and for the time of year. It'll feel more special that it'll represent the time of year you were married. Or focus your flowers towards particular areas of the wedding. The ceremony focal area for the wedding is obviously extremely important. I mean, you have 200, 300, 400, 500 people. They're seated there for a half an hour. They need something really gorgeous and interesting to look at, and it has to have a lot of dimension. It has to have a lot of depth. Centerpieces, if you're doing a sit-down dinner, because you have guests looking at that centerpiece for four to five hours. So that's extremely important. But whether you focus your flowers in a few key locations or you go over the top with the flower fantasy land, choose flowers that express your personality to create a stunning look that's unique to you. We're seeing so much color. Brides are ready to take a chance. They want it to be a party. So we're doing a lot of hot, hot pink. Hot pink is a wonderful color for weddings now. Picking bright, beautiful flowers that you love will set the tone for your special day and allow your wedding to blossom into an elegant, personalized experience. You can find gorgeous wedding flowers in Ideas and Decor on the planning pages of GetMarried.com. And to help keep track of all the details of your big day, make sure to use our wedding tools. Spring is a time when beautiful flowers are blooming, and spring brides need a look that's just as fresh. But those of you determined not to be a shrinking violet on your wedding day, Try hair and makeup that's guaranteed to put a spring in your step. Springtime is a great time of year where you really can do anything with your hair, but we want to kind of have a little fun with it. So we're going to do a beautiful, playful ponytail. It's just a great time of year to wear your hair all off your face. And what we'll do is, we'll just you know tease the hair a little bit, get some action going at the root. A great technique is, after you tease that hair in the crown, and right there in the front, just put a few clips in there and then spray it. Then, this is gonna create some lines. We can then move back and have some texture in the front. So when we hear ponytail, we think of little girl. So to kind of keep it along the lines of for a bride, we're gonna go low at the neck. And on the sides, I'm going to start creating a more defined curl so we can have some texture. So after I curl the sides of the hair, I delicately hold the hair and just pin. With this style, and being that it's springtime, we have a lot of options for hair accessories. We can either go with crystal, and what we could do with the crystal is we just slip them in, in between this textured look that we've created. The other option that we can do for a spring bride is a flower. I think this is the best time of year to choose to do fresh flowers. We have some options. We could place it on the side. If she's a destination bride, something on the side would be really, really pretty. Or maybe we wanna just do right in the center to keep it clean and polished looking. So this is our spring bridal hairstyle. We kept it playful and fresh for springtime. We're gonna create a beautiful spring look for our bride, Tara, today. So I'm just doing a gorgeous light peach shimmer. She has a few individual false lashes on her. I would do the individuals instead of a full strip for spring. We've done a little bit of foundation on her already. We've just put a tiny bit of bronzer on her just to give her a little bit of a sun-kissed glow. But in the spring, I'm gonna focus mainly on her blush. I'm gonna give her a beautiful, bright, pink blushed look because I really wanted to focus on her cheek. I wanted her to have a gorgeous flush color. She's got that playful flower in her hair. I don't want to overpower it. We just did a nice bright cheek, make her look nice and healthy. It's a great time of year to wear color. I think you have two different options. You go with something sheer and not too shimmery or like we did, something really glossy and fun that pops. And there we go, all set for spring. For more hair and makeup tips, go to the health and beauty planning pages of GetMarried.com. And to find great hair and makeup professionals where you live, visit the local resources pages. Don't go away. Up next on Get Married, I've got an idea to help make your wedding a chic, unforgettable event. From superhero to groom, we'll show you how one celebrity photographer captured the wedding of fantastic four-star Joanne Griffith. Stay with us.
me, the most beautiful bride is a timeless bride. Many brides wear too much makeup or they're bejeweled from head to toe and overly accessorized. So much so that your groom won't recognize you as you come down the aisle. In my book, Wedding Chic, I give advice on how to achieve a wedding look that's truly timeless. 20 years from now, when your children look at your wedding photos, you don't want them to say, Mom, what were you thinking? To make sure that doesn't happen, here are some tips. Your makeup should enhance your features naturally, not disguise them. You want your hair styled so that it stays in place, but not lack it so much that it looks like a national monument. Choose jewelry that complements your gown, but doesn't overpower it. Wear shoes that are elegant yet comfortable, so that you can really dance and enjoy your big day pain-free. I suggest having a second pair on hand in case your feet swell. And when it comes to the all-important dress, avoid dresses with too much fabric and too much embellishment. Instead, choose one fabric and just one type of embellishment, such as embroidery, lace or beading. Remember, you should wear the dress, not the dress wear you. Don't be afraid of colour. There's no rule that says you have to go down the aisle in a white dress. If cranberry is your favourite colour and it's the dead of winter, wear it. I recommend that you go to at least three different salons and try on as many dresses as possible before you buy one. That way you can really see what style works best on you and what is most comfortable. Follow these suggestions and I promise you a look that is truly wedding chic. For more of my tips on having a fabulous wedding, check out the Colin Cowie pages on getmarried.com. In the film Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, Yoan Griffith's wedding with Jessica Alba is interrupted by an evil guest. But in real life, his romantic Mexican marriage to Alice Evans went off without a hitch in a ceremony that was truly fantastic. For celebrity photographer Robert Evans, it's one of his favorites. One of my favorite weddings was an actor named Johan Griffin. He is the star of the Fantastic Four and his wife who's also an actress, Alice Evans. Their wedding was down at the Pomia in Los Cabos. The night before the wedding, we shot rehearsal dinner. At the Pomia, they have a beautiful chapel uh, that sits up above the hotel, and it was at the bottom of the steps and all around the area of the chapel. Next day, they got married on the sand in the beach. Johan and Alice uh, both are from the UK, and Johan's Welsh, and most of their family and friends were, so they sang some traditional Welsh songs. And it was just a beautiful ceremony. I had them go down on the beach so they can sort of spend some time with each other, and then I just shoot with a long lens and, you know, sort of capture those moments. They had the dinner and everything outside. Uh, there was a beautiful fountain as you walked in with flowers floating in the fountain. The couple sat down at the end at a long table with all the bridal party in front of a beautiful Spanish fireplace. After the dinner part of it was done, then they opened up the ballroom doors and it was set, it set up like a lounge. Out behind the room was a beautiful patio with a cigar roller and a beautiful Spanish fountain that was all lit in blue. It fit their personalities, very fun and delicate, but yet touching. For more celebrity weddings and to follow brides just like you through their planning, head to the Real Weddings pages on GetMarried.com. Don't go away. I'm about to show you a practical favor with personal flair that your guests will really write home about. What's hot right now for weddings? Giving your guests a practical and special memento of your big day that they can use every day. One idea we love, personalized pins. This adorable wedding pin has a window that shows four different messages. The messages change with every click. Show your names and wedding date and choose from a number of messages like true love lasts forever or two hearts become one or get creative and make up your own. To really cute up your pins, Choose a design that reflects you. How about wedding cakes, rings, or a bride and a groom? Another nice touch? Use a special phrase. A great wedding is all about the details, so check this out. The clips on these pins have a tiny, inspiring inscription like, happily married. Here's another idea. Get creative with your pins. 
Turn them into place card holders or have the guests use them to sign your guest book before taking one home. But you don't have to wait till your wedding day to send them out. Use pins as unique save the dates. Create your own personalized message and let your guests know you're looking forward to seeing them on your big day. However and whenever you choose to give them, wedding pins are a gift your guests will love using again and again. To see more wedding pins, go to the What's Hot pages on GetMarried.com. If you're engaged, I'm betting you want to share every detail of your wedding with everyone. Well, head to Get Married's Blogger Brides. Get Married's Blogger Brides is your online community where you can share your journey with other brides and get unique insights from my incredible star bloggers. Make friends, chat, follow my blog, and get some great ideas on Get Married's Blogger Brides. Thanks so much for joining us today on Get Married. Whenever you're in need of some wedding inspiration or planning tips, visit us at getmarried.com. I'm Colin Cowie. We'll see you right here next time.